Welcome to the Adapt or Die podcast. This podcast explores ideas related to self-growth, finding meaning, and living a more fulfilled lifestyle. It's your host, with the most, Armel Tala. And it's your host, on the low, Ben Smith. We're two college students on our own path of lifelong learning with the hope that you will join us in our journey. And now, it's time for the next episode of the Adapt or Die podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Book Club podcast, because at this point, we are officially a book club, and you guys should, <laughs> we should like let people know what books we're going to read next, so they can like yeah, read it should. with us, and then like they're like, yeah, man, these are some really great points they're bringing up. Didn't think about that in the book, but how's this week been for you? It's been a, it's been a good week, actually. It was very calm. I like regular week, to be honest. Not not a whole lot different from my usual stuff. How, what about you, Mo? How do you, know? I want to ask, how do you spend your, like, what is like your most average day? Like, what does the average day of Ben look like? The average day of Ben is, well, I usually have a morning routine, my workout, it's like eating, and then I usually do about four or five hours of work, and then maybe like three hours on the podcast, maybe two, depends, and then like something miscellaneous, so it might be like discussion section, or an exam, or quiz, or <laughs> something like that, you know, it's, it's like, like random miscellaneous stuff. Miscellaneous discussion, exam, very, very miscellaneous things, very miscellaneous. What about you? How, how's your week been, Mel? Um, you know, I must say, like, this podcast is, if you guys actually just, you know, think hard about what we talk about, like, sometimes it doesn't really hit you at first, right? You know, you listen to about, like, how to, how to improve the way you study. Um, what was it called? Like, proven ways to learn anything faster. That was the episode name, right? <clears throat> you listen to that podcast, and it may not hit you until it really hits you. And for me, that's what happened. So, I was like spending a lot of time like just taking notes. <laughs> if you if you listen to the podcast, it's again proven ways to learn anything faster. And then I realized like, wow, this is really time wasting. I went and go take my exam. I don't do good at all. And then I go and I didn't learn anything from it. <laughs> so I he texted me the other day. He was like, "Yo, I just realized taking notes is actually useless." I was like, "There we go." <laughs> Finally convert a convert. We yeah. got him. Finally, finally converted. So the podcast is changing lives one life at a time. And the first one was mine. So happy <laughs> to hear that. But today we're gonna be finishing up a book that I believe to be one of the best books. One of the very few books, <laughs> let me say, <laughs> that I finished reading. <laughs> <laughs> and that is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And what are the topics for today? Guys, today we're going to talking about specifically how to influence and lead other people. Wow. This sounds really, like the name of the book just sounds so malicious. I'm not going to lie. It does sound malicious. How to Win Friends, friends and, and Influence People. people. Like, 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 I think it's the win. It's like you don't, you don't win, win friends. You, yeah. You just kind of like... If, if the book was called How to Influence People, it probably wouldn't sound that malicious yeah. to me just because, like, it's very, like, even though How to Influence People does sound a bit malicious, but, like, it's still just, like, okay, that's, like, you directly just want right. to influence people. But then you add, like, How, how to, to Win, win friends. friends. You're, like, okay, why are you trying to win friends? You could have said How to Make Friends. like Yeah, like, How to Just Be Social. I don't know. But it, 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 the title, it, it sticks with you. That's that's good. That's what you call good marketing. It that's, sticks with that's you. That's great marketing right there. And but, so... So I started us off. What, we're talking about... How to win friends and influence people. What is the first thing that Mr. Carnegie says about how to win people to your way of thinking? Which another way of saying that is how to influence people. How to win people to your way of thinking, right? And so usually when you're wanting to get someone to think the way you want to think, right, it usually turns out to be like, you know, first it starts as a discourse, a discussion, right? Then slowly becomes a debate. The next <laughs> thing you know it becomes an argument, right? And so the best way to win that argument is to avoid it. You, you, you don't ever... Can you say it louder for the people in the back? For the people in the back, look, if you're trying to win an argument with someone, avoid the argument. That's it? That's, that's, that's all you need to know? Is there's that? no such thing as winning in an argument because there's only two results that's going to happen. One, the person that's lost the argument, right? You know, after you've you guys have gone back and forth and, lo- you know, logically, disp- logically laid out y'all's... Um, um, uh, arguments and everything. The person that lost, they're gonna feel salty. You know, they're gonna take out with the L. And guess what? The person that won, lost. 
There's no winning in any of this. The person that loses. So loses. how did the person that won lost? How's you that? didn't get the other person to start thinking the way you want them to think. That's that's really the biggest problem with arguing with someone, especially if you're trying to convince them to think a certain way or do a certain thing, because right. all they're going to come out and think once they're done with that argument is, well, I don't like them. Like they're they're so annoying. Yeah. Like they just were screaming the whole time. Like they're going to resent you than actually want to listen to what you have to think. And yeah, no, that's that's so true. I mean, anytime I've ever had an argument and if I ever won, it was mostly like to the expense of the other person's pride or you know, to the expense of their psyche or intelligence or you know somehow i insulted them right and that makes them feel bad like it makes them feel like they don't want to associate themselves with me anymore and if i lost then it's like the same thing happened or i was insulted and now i don't want to associate with them and so whatever i wanted from them or they wanted from me is just no longer possible because no one wants to work with each other when you yeah. argue right but how to like give me an example of how you get out of an argument or like how to like avoid arguments i guess or like how does this why does this work I feel like number one is you have to have really good emotional intelligence. First off, like emotional control. Right. Because I'm a person like I'll give you the example I'm going to bring up is on the basketball court. I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional person. I, you know, he is. I'm, I'm very not competitive, gonna lie. get very competitive. Like, I, you know, I want to win. I want to win. So so one, whenever an argument is about to arise, you, whoever is whoever has the most the most self-control most of the time will just be like hey look they will get they'll recognize the arguments about to happen and stop it and con be like either you know make a nice little joke to either kill it right or they'll say like hey look let's calm down let's bring it back right and then an example i actually had because ever since i've been reading this book i've been you know consciously actually trying to apply these and so there was a where i was playing basketball one time and then like i went and scored and then somebody in the dude that i was that was guarding me he says oh no you use um i can't remember what he said it was uh uh, you hook a lot. He, like, yeah. He said I, I hook. And then Ben's saying I hook a lot. This just professional. Somewhat. This pro level, pro, there's different moves. There's different levels to the game. And y'all Apparently, just, I'm not in those levels. Yeah, yeah. You just, y'all just don't realize the game is physical. There's a lot of little things you do. But moving forward. So he goes, ah, oh, man, like, that, that bucket shouldn't count. That bucket should count. And at first, me being me, I was like, man, what are you talking about? And then, like, as soon as it came out and I screamed and then, like, I, I said in my last, like, little words, I was just like, man, what are you talking about? And then I stopped. And I was like, actually, actually, wait, 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 wait. I grabbed the ball and I was like, let's talk about this. Actually, let's like, and I walked over to him. I was like, look, let's talk about this. I will give you the ball. Like, let's talk about why you think that's, you know, that was illegal or whatever. And then I was like, I looked, I looked to everyone that was around and I was like, do you guys agree? And he, and then at that point, once he saw that I was willing to communicate about it, he was just like, I was willing to like, you know, talk it out and not just argue and scream. He was like, you know what? You can have it. Like, it's fine. Like, whatever. We'll, we'll move on to the next play. That's how it works. So like, and to me, like to really avoid an argument, it's one, to be able to recognize that an argument's going to happen. And then right. two, having the emotional control to just take a step back and then try to either just completely not talk about it if it's not an important argument or, you know, be able to bring it back to a discussion. Right. And what you said there, this is like a total side note, but this, this tactic is going to work really well if you're in a relationship, dudes. So your lady might try to bring in some emotional stuff, you know, whenever you're arguing, they always do that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just being it like, no, they you know, always do but that. I, it feels like they do that. Right. So just make sure, bring it back down to a discussion. And then you're just talking about the points. You're not talking about, you know, emotions. emotions or whatever because that's when it gets out of hand there and then was, she wins and then there you're, was you're a done you're great done. quote in the book that like i once i read it i literally stopped everything i was doing and i like posted Dang. it on my instagram well, hold on hold on this is we need a moment of silence for this Whoa. silence hit us with it uh, i can't remember off the top of my head <laughs> like you know, the way you, <laughs> there was an amazing quote that i heard. I, I heard it and but it I was stopped super and long I thought about it, it and now okay i, I can't remember it you it's guys, amazing it's okay, perfect so for those that are that are listening <laughs> i have we have the book displayed in the back and um i'm, I'm gonna go find it but once you're talking about the next point i'm gonna go yeah. look for it but it had to do with the thing of like when there's two people screaming there's no there's no no one's communicating and this has to do with, like mm. relationships. Talking about couples, yeah. like when two couples start screaming, that it was like it was like this one couple promised to themselves: when one person starts starts screaming, then the other person will just shut up. Because if two people are screaming, no one, no one's listening. Yeah. And I, maybe point. it had to do with his list, like wanting to be a better listener. But it, I think that's so huge. That is huge. That's like. like like that, just that simple idea of like the other person starts screaming. Like yes, the 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 person in you wants to just scream back and you know let them have it. But if you just be quiet, just listen to them, let them get it all out. 
actually hear out what they're screaming about. You know, some right. of it is obviously emotionally driven. Another one is actually their underlying argument. You hear that, and then you hear it, and then you go, okay. And then you then say your point calmly. So someone has to be in that party, or, right. or both parties have to recognize that, like, that's the only way you're ever going yeah. to actually conclude. You, you, you need to bring it back down to a discussion. That's the bring it back to down to a discussion. I, th- I think we've hit home. Yeah, we've hit on home. That. Uh, we, like, we may spend a little I've, too much but time. But I think on like don't argue, that one is like really. It huge, is really though. huge. It's huge. I can't remember who said it. last thing. Last thing on this, but it was this saying that says, two, from a distance, from a distance, it's hard to tell who the fool is when two people are arguing." Some, I, I feel like I, I, I didn't know, say it the right way. I know, I know because there's a much clever, about, yeah. like it's, it, it much... sounds very nice. But the idea is if you're looking at a distance and you see two people screaming, yeah, you're not going to know who's right or wrong. You're not going to know who the fool is here because they both look like fools screaming on right. the street. So just remember that. Just remember that. Keep it uh, going. Um, <laughs> cause we have a lot to cover. Uh, the next thing I want to go over is this is so simple, it's so effective. It's, you should know this. If you are wrong, admit it quickly. Emphat- emphatically okay. people know this but the ego won't let them yeah that's that, i mean that's the core of this point right here exactly exactly what mel said you need honestly to just get over your ego and your self-pride in the sense that not every idea that you have is 100 percent true okay if you think that then i can assure you you're wrong um <laughs> I can, with without without a doubt you're you're wrong um and and just know that like no one is perfect so that you, like realize that admitting you're wrong is not admittance to you know, it's not a def, it's not like some defect with you that's not mm-hmm. that's not what's happening here it's actually it takes a lot of courage to say hey i'm wrong i, I i'm sorry i admit like you're right please like now like can i learn from like, like my mistake and can you help me understand why i was wrong and that's that's where you should be and you'll learn so much more from that. And think about it this way. Let's let's say that um, you got in this argument with someone else or, you know, in the realm of argument. You got in this argument, right? And then you realize, like, afterwards, like, y'all may not have finished or blah, 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 whatever. You finish it or whatever. You realize that you were wrong, that you were wrong, right? And so some most people usually after lose, after an, having an argument with someone and then realizing themselves they're wrong, they're not going to want to admit that they were wrong, right? Right. And so, you know, you get back to that other person and then, like, there's a little bit of tension. But imagine, like, you're about to either, you know, that you, you guys are about to either continue that argument, but you walk up and openly admit, like, hey, I was wrong, right? And that person, that person's ready to have another argument. They're yeah. like, you know, they're, they're like, they're just they're, like, they're, it's like that, um, the uh, cowboys thing when they're on a yeah, standoff. Like, on the hip. he's just ready. And then you just actually, you know, drop your hand and say, hey, man, you won. It, it takes people so off guard because yeah. they're so ready to be hostile. But as soon as they see, like, you know, you show that um, vulnerability or you right. show that uh, you ad- you admit that you're wrong, then they start to become actually more sympathetic yeah. to your point. And I, I think to your point as well, building off what you said, is that it really creates a lot of respect for the future in the sense that like, oh, this person's willing to admit that they're wrong. That means they're not searching to be right. They're searching for the best idea. And that is someone that I want to work with because mm-hmm. that will help me and us and our team or whoever I'm working with get the best, you know, of idea you know what you know what i'm trying to say yeah, no, exactly. yeah um so that's that's kind of one other way to frame it It helps you a lot in the future and a sub note on this is um because dale he brings in a lot of ideas there's a yeah. lot of other principles you don't mention that really are like the same thing or reinforce similar the same he idea. says a lot of the same things but like in a different, different way. way but one of them is show respect show respect for the other person's opinions never say you're wrong you, mm-hmm. you broke that principle come on ben you just told the audience they were wrong you guys aren't wrong you're just not right okay you're you're, you're massively incorrect so <laughs> you're massively incorrect <laughs> but um this again just goes with like a quickly quickly admitting and like that you're wrong and everything right. so one you don't ever in a, this is all in the sense of an argument if you're in an argument with someone you should never like if you're trying to change change someone's point of view or think like you should never tell them they're wrong because as soon as you tell them they're wrong they're defensive they become defensive and once you have someone in a defensive state that means that they're closed-minded right now and and nothing that you say will penetrate that wall of their defenses and and it doesn't matter if you're completely right it it, they're not going to understand what you're saying or or be open to what you're saying really so you you just want to make sure you soften it up yeah, butter them up. Butter, butter them up. Butter, butter them up. up. But like in a sincere way. Let's yeah. to, to be number one, sincere. Like so that simply means like to really summarize this is if you're gonna if you're trying to have a discussion with someone, do not if they say something that's wrong, do not just flat out go like, You're wrong, right? You wanna you wanna let them know like, hey, look, 
what you were saying was interesting, da da da, and give them an approach. You want to come in, just letting them know, like, hey, I not I'm not saying that you're 100 percent right, but give them a different way of thinking. Right. And then you know, if it turns into an argument, you feel it heading that way. Calm it down. Yeah. Calm it down, and then if you're wrong, simply admit you're wrong. And most argu- in most debates, most things, most discussions, you will more likely win or be on the winning side of right. that. And I think that's that's a good amount for that. <laughs> yeah, I do want to jump to, uh, we have a few things that we want to hit, but I think let's jump to try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view, because I think this is one of the core ideas of the book, mm-hmm. um, and I think we should really like hit this for a second. Um, and so just think about, like this can be applied to like every every aspect of what you're trying to do. Trying to see the other person's point of view is going to be so helpful in every way. If you're having an argument, if you are just trying to get someone to do something for you, if you're just trying to be someone's friend, understanding their motives and understanding why they do what they do is going to allow you to take steps, actions, say things that's going to help you achieve your goals and their goals as well. Um, that's And this, you got to understand that it's something I'm really starting to pay attention to is people don't actually care about <laughs> the other person's like like genuine like there's yeah. there's some no, people true. you do care about and like you really sit down and listen but majority of the time let me not say people don't care let me say as all of us as humans collectively yeah. most of the times the per other person we're talking to we don't really care about like what what their opinion is of something right. or we don't really care about like what point of view they have of it we have a certain motive and objective that the reason why we're talking to them is to accomplish that yep. and so whatever information is required of us f- to either pick up from them in order to in order to uh, achieve that motive that objective is what we're going to pay attention to right so most so most of the times you like you can tell this when you're talking to someone that's trying to sell you something right yeah like they're trying to sell you something and you know you're telling them they're asking you all these different questions but you can tell that they're really not listening you can tell that they're just kind of like waiting they're waiting to hear that one thing that's gonna like so they can attach on and to like try to sell and drive you on that one point right right no, and, that, yeah and so in this in this point like dale saying like if you show that you are like you genuinely want to hear that other person's point of view like you genuinely are hearing every single aspect of their point mm-hmm. they're going to become again like we mentioned more vulnerable they're going to become they're going to soften up and they're they're going to let their guards down and they're right. that's when you can actually be able to open up their mind be able to change their mind because you've 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 allowed them to say you've allowed them to think that not think but you've actually created an environment that lets them that lets them know that this other person actually cares about what i have to say this yep. other person is interested in what i have to say they they will take what i say with um right. they'll actually take what i, I don't want to say with a grain of salt but they will take what i say seriously mm-hmm. and so therefore they're going to be more willing to take what you say seriously cuz once you feed into our own like selfish our own like selfish of needs, yeah, wanting like, our, our own selfish needs of wanting to have our opinions be heard be first then the other person's like well i'm gonna be willing to do that since they right. get that for me that's most people and so this point is like really huge in in that aspect like you view it that way it starts to really make a lot of sense yeah and, and that kind of links exactly he didn't mel didn't use the exact words but what he was saying from last episode was listening to the other person and understanding how they feel it really makes them feel valued and important which was one of the fundamental principles we talked about last episode Mm -hmm. or in the last episode we recorded for how to win friends and influence people and because people like you said need to have that need filled of of being important once they have that filled they really appreciate you for filling that need and understanding them and taking the time to really get to know them and understand why you do what you want like what you do and trying them trying to help you and that will allow you again or i feel like i switched the pronouns there <laughs> i feel like i, I like sw- and, but i think you know what i'm trying to say in terms yeah. of like if you understand someone else they will really appreciate your efforts and they will, and they will return the favor you yeah 100 percent. and another last one before we move on to the second part about being a leader um is let the other person feel that the idea is his or hers and i, I just i'll quickly hit on this and then you can put um your uh, two cents on it as well but this is super important mm-hmm. because like how many times have you felt motivated to do something for like someone else, right? It's this whole idea that we're in this generation that's like, we don't want to work to build someone else's, you know, goals or dreams, you know, yeah. we don't want to work for someone else. We don't want to, we don't want to be bossed around by someone else, right? It right. kind of fits in this whole idea. And it, this, the idea that if you let someone else think that the idea you're having is theirs, 
they're more likely going to be inclined to do it because it has it comes from them. They're going to feel like, oh, this is something I thought about. We take a lot of pride into things that we that we put the word my in front of. Right. Anything we put my in front of, there's there's a bit more pride. And I think you had a really good example yeah. about kind of like how this podcast started. No, so this is actually this is kind of funny. The way this podcast started, Nell's actually really good at this in general, but one of the things that he did when we started the podcast was we had talked about, you know, let's start a podcast, and I wanted it to be a new podcast. Like, it was just Mel and I starting a brand new thing, and he told me, he mentioned it a few times with equipment and stuff. He was like, oh, yeah, I have equipment because um, I have my old podcast, Adapt or Die. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. And after he kept dropping that, he like he like name dropped it a few times and said like, you know, like whatever, whatever. And then um, one day I was like, Mel, why don't we just use your your old podcast like why do we need to like make a new one and he was like like yeah like why that's what i was thinking too and then later i realized i was like wait <laughs> he probably just told me that so i would think the same thing and ask him instead of him asking me and i was like that's so like he he big brain like he slow played me <laughs> in, a, in a good way like it wasn't like i realized it and i was like well i mean i still wanted to do it so mm-hmm. it's fine but it was like yeah. it was it was an idea that like he hit me with and i was like dang like Look, I that was kind of smart he got me like, i didn't even read the book at that point so imagine the things that could have been <laughs> but yeah it was it wasn't malicious at all but that just shows you like once you get that idea of it like how much more invested do you feel like you are now well, you, how invested do you feel like you were when you had that idea compared to if I said like, nah, just do it my podcast. But yeah, if you, if you were like, just do it my podcast, I'd be like, mm, I don't really want to do that. But if I'm like, I, like let's do yours podcast, then it's like, yeah, like mm-hmm. it's, 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 it feels like it's, it's my idea. It's like yeah. I want to do it for us. It's not like you're doing it for, for you. you. It's and like we're doing it for each us. other exactly. Yeah. And we're just gonna hit on the last. The last uh, points on here, and I'll just quickly rant them on. You take right. us to the next segment. But so appeal to the nobler motives. So that just means like appeal to the better side. And if, you know, a lot of, uh, I guess, criminals, they'll do a lot of like bad things, but they just, they have like a nobler motive in their mm-hmm. mind that they're like, oh, I was doing this to save this. I was doing this to help my family. So if you're able to appeal to people's nobler motives, more likely to want to um, think the way you think or think or, you know, you can change their mind. Right. Dramatize your ideas. Be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires. Begin in a friendly way. Let the other person do a great deal of talking. Get the other person to say yes, yes immediately. So, again, this yes, yes part goes with the idea of soften them up. So yeah. if you can get them to say yes about certain things, like little little things that lead up to your bigger question, then you're more likely to... Um, to be successful in that last question and then throw down a challenge because who doesn't like a good old challenge exactly as before we move on i would like to say the beginning in a friendly way made me laugh because i was like like you had like do we do we have to go over that like is that like <laughs> do, is, is that is yeah, that not obvious who, like, who, who just starts off like hey just like a complete ch- jack a like no yeah that's but, just that's just not gonna anyways work. total side note so now we're gonna go um this section is uh, we're gonna talk about more shift into like how to specifically uh, be a better leader without without giving offense or creating resentment among the people that you're leading. This is this is really what um, this is what Mel is here for. Well, this is what I'm here for. This is why I'm um, here for. The first thing is begin with praise and honest appreciation. Okay, the key word there is going to be honest because people hate insincere appreciation. I think we all know this. Like, if you've ever had someone give you a compliment that you didn't feel it was actually like unique or special to you it was like um i don't know i felt this a lot in basketball where it'd be like my teammates because i was having a bad game or it was like a bad stretch they'd be like great job man like no keep shooting like it was like it felt like all the, everything they were saying was like a pick me up it was like it, it it subtly was telling me that i was not good enough to be on the court even yeah. though it was a compliment if that makes sense yeah so it was like insincere compliments actually have the opposite effect and they drive people away but honest appreciation is really going to kind of soften people up, mm-hmm. let them know that like you value them and like their opinion, you know, make them feel important. And then that's when you use, you know, that's when you launch into your criticism. That's when you're allowed to say, hey, like you're really good at this, but it would really help if you could do A or B. Mm-hmm. And simply put, the only thing I'm going to add to this is like, who doesn't want to be appreciated simply, yeah. right? So if you have an organization, a team or something, and you're not showing appreciation to you know what someone's doing in that or you never show them any appreciation like how long are they going to go before they they say you know what i want to go somewhere where i feel like i'm needed and i'm wanted here right so like 
this one is very straightforward, and we've probably hit this at home. Like I think probably I feel like he brought this up in the first. He part probably of the did. Book. We probably talked about it a lot. Yeah. Actually. He, again, he talks about this a lot of the same core ideas, just yeah. written in different ways. But this ties into what you brought up about starting off with honest appreciation. But talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. And I, I feel is this like, like, yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. But can, can you give us an example, I guess, or any any ideas about this that might. I, I think provide some some insight that we we didn't think about before. Um, I think number one is like f- sometimes it's easy for us to just kind of automatically jump to telling someone like they made a mistake, right? And being like, "Yo, like you did you did X Y Z blah 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 wrong." But when someone else hears that again, their safeguard is gonna go up, right? Like as soon as they hear, as soon as you just automatically the first thing that comes out your mouth is like, "Hey, you yo, like you should have been doing this, like you should have." You know, you should have, you know, written this paper this way or right. you should have made sure you communicate with this person or you shouldn't have done that. And like parents should know this. No one here should be a parent, I hope. And I mean, if you are a parent listening to this, thank you so much. Yeah, no, we, we appreciate you. But um, like even with kids, like you tell a kid automatically like this is what you're doing wrong. They're just going to look at you and be like, do it again. Right. Like right. just do it again. But if you let someone know, hey. Like, hey, like, this is where I've messed up. Like, I've been in the same similar situation. I've done this. Again, this softens them, this softens soften them up. This lets yeah. them, this lets their guard down and say, like, oh, okay, like, this person is, you know, this person's seeing it from my side of view. The way they, the way they begin to perceive it is like, okay, they're putting themselves in my shoes, right. letting me know that they've been through what I'm, what I'm going through right now. But then they're going to provide helpful information. So they realize that the information is coming from a place of sincerity. It's coming from exactly. a place of experience rather than coming from just a place of like position of power, position yeah. of leadership bossing around. Because the closer you are, and, I, and one thing I'm realizing about just like leadership is like the closer you make yourself feel into the group that the people you're leading, the easier it is to communicate. Because it's much easier to, you know, get your peers to want to do something than get right. as not to don't view your people this way, but subordinates, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that's the only word I could think I about. But mean. like if you view people in your org as subordinates or just people that are there to listen to you, they're not going to get anything to done. Yeah. But if you view them as, you know, equal, your peers, like y'all are all working towards this one mission, which is the idea of an organization or company, then they're more likely inclined. Right. I, you said it, I could not have said it better myself. I would just reiterate um, just for a second, just that the reason this works is because uh, it comes from a place of sincerity and a place of real concern for the other person and, and their well-being rather than a place of I'm better than you and you're my subordinate. Do what I say. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to mention subordinate is such an interesting word. It is an interesting word. Subordinate. There's just some words. Uh, let me also mention, if you do decide to read this book, just understand this book is from like the 19, like 20s, 30s. It's an old, 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 book. old book. One that just tells you how good it is. And yeah. two, but you're just going to hear a lot of like sayings and phrases. You're just yeah. like, yo, is this grandpa? This is such a boomer. So yeah, no, it's a <laughs> boomer, boomer very dings. boomer book. It's a very, even boomers. I don't even think boomers. And this, no, yeah, this, this is, is like is the age of boomers. This is, well, no, boomers were born after World War II. So this is like, he wrote this in the, so this was like before, b- before that, like pre boomer, like maybe wow. a generation or two. Pre boomer book. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, the thing that this ties basically right into what Mel was saying earlier. Um, instead of don't give people direct orders, uh, instead you should ask them questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and I, I'm not sure who the example was in the book. It might have been Owen D. Young. I could be wrong about that though. But they, he said that he never ever gave an order, he always gave questions, which was mostly like, if you're wondering, like, what does that mean? Where it's just like, instead of saying, like, Mel, do this, it's like, would you mind doing this for me? It's more of like a, like, like you have favor. Yeah, like, you have autonomy. It's like it's your choice. It's like obviously like yeah, I have a position of power, but it's like I'm asking you to do it out of a, just because like I know you can help me, and it's like I need your help, and obviously I pay you, but like mm-hmm. you know like that type of like yeah. it, it's it's sincere. It's not like do and, this. And guess and guess what I, other idea we just talked about that ties in, and that's make letting the other person feel like it's their idea. Because yeah. when you instead when you ask a question instead of proposing it as an order. The person, like, it makes the person think, okay, I have options. Right. I'm either choosing to do it or not choosing to do it, right? Exactly. So when they choose to do it, a part of them feels more committed to the um, to the thing they're supposed to do because they're like, I had the choice to do it or not do it, and I chose to do it, so, like, let me make sure I do it. 
Right. Wow, this is an amazing one. Like I, I like I'm honestly gonna probably take this and yeah. Know. And it's so easily applicable. It's like you can all you have to do is just phrase your orders as questions, right? And it, it hits a lot of things. And it's like there's no drop. Like, you don't have to do anything special here. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's and not, like it's just it's easy. It's effective. It works. Like and if you're in a position of leadership and you're thinking like, well, what if they just always choose to not do it? Well then, uh, then you have those consequences in your right. organization that lets them know. So it's weird because like you ask them the question as if you're propo- giving them the option to say yes or no, but it's just it's the fact that you're letting them know that right. like you want you letting them know that they're important enough where they can make a decision. Yeah. Right. So it, it gives them that it gives them that feeling, and that's what you want to be giving, and that's how you should be viewing your people because like even though we're saying all these like these tips and tricks, they're not really tips and tricks. It's just. It's just a way, it's practically the way a sincere leader would actually be acting. Yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't view these as like, oh, just do this simple trick and then turn your orders into question and you're going to be effective. Right. You want to be sincerely doing this. Like You sincerely think and like believe that the people in your organization are competent and willing to do the, um, to do the right thing. Exactly. And so that's why you frame it that way in that question because you truly believe it. So that's just one 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 thing I really wanted to say, just because, like, again, the book sounds very malicious. This te- these tips yeah. can sound like we're just trying to get you guys to be manipulative people, but like we're the, just trying to genuinely let you guys know the perspective from a right. sincere leader. The, this is not like these are not tips and tricks. These are literally like the most effective methods that Dale Carnegie has pulled from his years of research on how to effectively, sincerely, and and, and deal with people. Mm-hmm. Right? These are not. This is like how to the best methods to deal with people. This is not yeah. tips and tricks. Um, these work because they work. They work. Right. They um, work. <laughs> anyways, uh, the next thing uh, that I want to go over is, uh, or that we're going to go over, is praise the slightest improvement um, and praise every improvement. We're not going to touch on this too much because but it's 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 pretty. It goes it intuitive. goes hand in hand with giving sincere and honest appreciation. Right. And, and basically, what, the idea is that. Um, Positive reinforcement works a lot better than negative reinforcement. I think we talked about that last Mm -hmm. episode, um, so I won't elaborate on that too much. But basically, when you're giving a lot of praise and appreciation for even the slightest improvement, people want to keep improving and keep holding themselves to that standard because they want to keep having that appreciation for doing a good job, and Mm -hmm. that will reinforce good behavior, good, uh, good results, whatever, whatever. So giving them, letting people know that what they're doing is good, making sure it's sincere, will push them to keep doing a good job and even go further. And then another way to positively reinforce from the beginning is give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. I just love the way I just love the way it is it's fine. Can you do that again for me? Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. And if you're not watching the video you're missing out on me, you know, putting my thumbs up and just giving the old man just I don't know. But um this again is very similar to the other idea, so we won't hit on it right. for long. But if you tell someone like, "Yo, like, dude, you're a really good, you're a really good speaker, Ben." Like, Thank like you. when I listen to you talk, like, I'm interested. And I remember like even Jen and them were saying that mm-hmm. at the beginning. They're they like, were saying they're that, like, yeah. Ben, like I will just hear you talk all day. You give that person that reputation, and then you give them something related to that task. Like, hey, yeah. Ben, do you want to start a podcast? Ben's like, well, well, I, am a, I guess I have a reputation of being a great speaker. Like, people like listening to me. Right. I guess I'll do it. Yeah, no, I, I could. I think I could do that. I could probably say I some could, words I could on the microphone. Spit, spit a little, yeah. Spit a little. Spit some bars, Ben. <laughs> and we, we said Drop he's a fine speaker, no, not a kidding. rapper. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but, I can't rap. <laughs> nah, but yeah. I so, wish. again, this ties in positive, re- positive reinforcement because... Once you give someone that reputation to live up to, like we want, we most of the times we want to fulfill that. We care yeah. a lot about what other people think for good reason. For good reasons, I, is, I mean, I will say you should care about the people who are close to you, not strangers. But not, keep going. Yeah, not strangers. Like, yeah. So, Anyways, so it's total side note. So, total side note. But we'll we'll definitely hit on that point more. But yeah, that's that's really the main core ones, and yeah. then the rest of the ideas brought up because there was um nine of them. And um, so some of the other ones were make the other make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest. So this ties in again a lot with like making them feel like it's their idea. Yeah. You know, understanding their point of view, making sure you understand why they want to do all this mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, use encouragement. Make make the fault seem easy to correct. Right, someone makes a mistake. Again, don't just criticize them. Right. Don't just correct. Like 
uh, use encouragement. Let them know that it's fixable, right? And obviously, if they do it over and over again, that's a different problem. <laughs> um, and then let the other person save face. And can you explain what this yeah. means? Real quickly, basically, don't embarrass someone for no reason, right? So if you have to tell someone that they're wrong, make sure you do it in private. Let the other person save their pride and, and their... Um, yeah, so let them save their pride in front of others. Uh, the example they gave in the book was just like the head of a plant. He like just completely criticize and embarrass his supervisor in front of clients mm -hmm. in front of his employees and everything and the supervisor just left he, he was like no i don't want to work here right yeah. so he let them save face all this, the plant manager had to do was just do it in private and instead of yelling at him in front of everyone so mm -hmm. just don't embarrass people for no reason it doesn't make any sense You're, it's kind of like the whole arguing thing you're just insulting them. This book, to summarize this book, really, it's a great book on just really human nature and yeah. being able to understand that and using that to better like better handle your interactions with people. So, I highly recommend this book. Ben, what would you rate this book? Because you have a, Ben. Ben Ben has read a lot more books than me, so he can give a a more um, more experienced rating. I can give you guys my novice rating. I will. I will say, um, for me personally, mm -hmm. I will say that my, my book ratings are based on how much new and good information I got from the book. So mm -hmm. for my personal rating, I would say this book was like probably like an eight. It was, mm -hmm. it was a lot of good like information that like he, he put down in words, and it helped me a lot. Just even a lot of things I feel like I knew to some extent intuitively, it's good to be able to describe them with and language. And, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but an amazing book. Uh, and yeah, what, what would you give this book? Honestly, this this it, book. And as a side note, an eight is very high for me. Like I like I take the one to ten scale very seriously. I will give books twos. Like I have no problem doing that. This this book this book, th like it 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 tips its toes around a ten for me. Okay. So like I would say it's like a nine point five okay. nine. Again, novice, not have read too many of them, but from everything I've heard about the book and from like my own personal reading and like me genuinely enjoying yeah. reading like each example, um, it, it was really good because I think that it's just so. At, like it's in, it's is this book is something Instinct. every single part of it you can instantly apply right like instantly just if you're just conscious enough to think like you know how should i you know not every single time of course you want to be yourself and a lot of the times but you if you're dealing in situations where you're put in you, you know trying to do an are you talking to someone or just yeah. overall being a better person like a lot of the um, principles and ideas in this book like are so applicable, so easy to use, so easy to just think about and be like, let me do it now that I think it had like a direct impact on me. So I really like the book. I think it's super easy to read. Great way to start in this whole yeah. like self-help, self-growth journey. So definitely. Um, and Ben, please be do the honors and letting us know about or I'm actually, just going to hit the most important recaps real quick. Hit the so most important. When people when people to where you're thinking, just make sure don't Avoid an argument. That's the best way um, to just avoid arguments. I, I said that wrong, but anyways, um, if you're wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. Um, and then the third thing, see other people's point of view. And then for being a leader, uh, begin with honest and sincere appreciation. Mention your mistakes first. Ask questions instead of giving orders. And uh, praise the slightest improvement and every improvement. And the last thing is give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Gotta and now the fine. it is, what's up? I said, gotta love the fine the, reputation. The fine reputation. <laughs> now for my favorite part of the episode, a quote, or actually a pair of quotes from Amelicus Melius. A pair of quotes. By fighting, you never get enough. But by yielding, you get more than expected. An old, I think it's an old proverb. I had old proverb in my notes. I it think, could be. I don't know a, if it's a I'm Chinese. Not, I don't know. Well, I, I know I'm it's a sure proverb, it's but a I proverb, don't know if it's a Chinese or if it's just right. from like the Bible. Yeah, I'm not but, sure either. Yeah, that's a really good one. And then last last but not least, from MLK himself, I judge people by their own principle, not by my own. And from a man that lived in the 1960s, having to deal with a lot of very interesting people with very interesting motives against him. Yeah. That says a lot. So a lot. thank you guys for listening. Hope this... This has honestly been a really, to me, I really like this book. We did two episodes about it. So yeah, like, it, it's a really great book. You, I would highly recommend reading it. The benefit you get from the time you put into reading it is insane compared to most books, I would say. It's easily applicable, not a whole lot of effort in implementing them. Just mm -hmm. You just got to do it. There's no extra time involved. So. And, the, and the start of the book says, treat this book like it's <laughs> I your forgot life. about that. It's like this book is... You should reread this book. You should keep it on you. You should you should read it before you go to bed. And when I tell you the book did not lie, 
one bit. It did not disappoint. Did not disappoint. So thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Adapt or Die, TikTok, AOD Media, and subscribe, like, share with your friends because I know you got some friends that need help making more friends. We all do. We all do. Check out the clothing brand. Link down below. Blog as well. Fire, 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 especially if you're trying to learn. Um, what's, what's, what are the blogs that came out? The blogs that I've published so far are Learning and Deep Work. Uh, if you're a college student, perfect blogs to be reading. Yep. Till next time. Peace.